today we're going to be talking about weapon attachments in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. Uh, normally I like to give you guys the hard numbers, but with things like recoil and weapon spread, it's a lot harder to get those numbers. So we're going to just kind of do the bunch of side by side comparisons and hopefully you guys can figure out on your own and with maybe a little bit of help from myself, which uh, the attachments are going to be best to use. So first off, let's talk about recoil in this game and how it's handled. A lot of games like Counter-Strike Go, for example, have predictive recoil in different weapons. They each have their own recoil pattern. And while there is some variance, if you learn how to control for the recoil pattern, you can full auto and still maintain relative control over your weapon. Uh, if you look at the side by side here in Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, however, uh, the recoil is completely random. There's no consistent pattern. Certain weapons seem to have a predilection to pull to the left as opposed to the right, for example, but overall recoil appears to be completely random and there's no way to necessarily know how your weapon is going to fire. Because that actually makes these comparisons kind of difficult, so we're going to do our best and we're going to have multiple examples for each of the attachments to kind of average around. Uh, so first off, we have the angled foregrip. Uh, it slightly reduces horizontal and vertical recoil and makes switching to ADS faster. So let's take a look at how it switches to ADS. Did you see it? Because it's real hard to notice. So we're going to slow it down. So if there is a difference, it is really minor. It actually seems like maybe the animation is almost the same length and there's just a little lurping in the in the uh, beginning and end that are sped up based on having the attachment, but it is a very minor increase. We're talking less than a quarter of a second. And the uh, vertical foregrip also makes the same claims to ADS faster. So let's take a look at that. And again, you probably missed it. So let's slow it down. And as you can see, again, it is so minor. So let's take a look at both of them compared to each other. And it seems like maybe the angle foregrip comes out on top. I mean, it's real close. This could be a recording artifact. Either way, you're going to be seeing, you know, a few milliseconds, maybe tens of milliseconds added in your, or, or decreased in your ADS time. So don't necessarily rely on these too heavily. So now the question is, what's better, the vertical foregrip or the angled foregrip? The angled foregrip claims to reduce both horizontal and vertical recoil, while the vertical foregrip only claims to reduce horizontal recoil. As you can see from these comparisons, it is really hard to tell. Both of these seem to reduce recoil in a pretty minor way. I suspect pretty much either one is going to provide about the same benefit. It actually it actually seems like the vertical foregrip also reduces vertical recoil, even though it claims not to. So either way you take it, these are probably going to be good. At the end of the day, you're going to want one over having none because it's a definite improvement. And the vert foregrip and the angle foregrip, it can be put on the vector, the ump, the M416, and the scar L only. So next up, we're going to be looking at the quick draw, the extended mags, and the extended quick draw magazine attachments for guns. These are available for all of the weapons except for the crossbow, the car, and the shotguns. So a lot of people have asked, does the quick draw mag make my gun fire faster when I equip it, my stats say, and my gun is firing faster? As you can see from this comparison, it does not. Uh, but if you do take a look at this other comparison, it does make your weapon reload considerably faster. And that is for both tactical and full reloads. It is an absolute improvement. Uh, the extended uh, magazine, which we don't really have a shot here of, just ups how many uh, bullets you're going to have in a magazine. It varies from weapon to weapon. It is not a flat percentage upgrade, and each weapon is going to have its own unique extended mag profile. On some weapons, it's really great. On some, it's not so not so good. The Vector, for instance, almost doubles the magazine, whereas the uh, P92 pistol, it only adds five to the already uh, sized 15 round magazine. The extended quick draw, however, is the best of both worlds. It actually has no downsides compared to the other two. It both ups your magazine that same amount as an extended mag, and it also increases your reload time the exact same amount as a quick draw. So if you ever find an extended quick draw magazine, that's the one you're going to want to take over all the others. So next up, we have barrel attachments. These are available for most weapons, except for pistols and crossbows, really. The two main ones are the compensator and the flash hider and the silencer, although we'll get to that later. The compensator and the flash hider both uh, claim to reduce horizontal and vertical recoil, with the compensator claiming to reduce it more significantly. And in our side-by-side -side comparisons, that seems to be true. It does seem like the compensator actually reduces the recoil a little bit more. Again, they're pretty close. The one difference, though, and as you'll see here in, in these comparison shots, is that the flash hider also considerably reduces the flash that comes out of your barrel when you fire, perhaps making you more concealable and definitely making it harder for enemies to zero in on where your location is when you're firing. So the visuals on that are actually pretty significant, and even though the flash hider is a little worse for recoil management, it might make it an 
overall stronger attachment in the long run. Though again, that's going to boil down to personal preference. So next up, I took a look at the silencer. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot for this one. I just wanted to confirm that it didn't seem to affect recoil in any way. And in my side by side with a naked M416, it doesn't really seem like the silencer does anything for the uh, recoil. And again, that kind of falls in line with, with uh, its description. It just claims to reduce a weapon's sound to increase stealth. And it does seem to do that uh, in my preliminary testing. You can hear an unsilenced shot from much further than you can hear a silent shot. And overall, the impact of the sound is considerably less. I haven't done exact testing on the limit on that. I do believe that the sound engine is still evolving, though I will be doing an OCD video on sound in the future. So keep an eye out for that. So finally, we have the tack stock on the M416. Now, this is actually a unique attachment to the uh, 416. It can only be fitted on the 416. And it claims to make recoil recovery faster and reduce weapon sway. Unfortunately, in my testing, I wasn't able to actually prove that it did either of those things. Uh, we put in, I put an eight times on it and sat on a mountain and looked at a shed. And as you can see, there seems to be about exactly the same weapon sway uh, on both the tack stock and the non-tack stock. And so I took some shots with it, and it also seems like the recoil is exactly the same after each single shot. So I'm not really sure what the tack stock is supposed to do right now, if anything. I'm not sure if it's a bug or if I've somehow missed it. If you guys actually know what I'm missing and you want to leave a comment below, that'd be great. I'll, uh, I'll do an addendum to this video and try and address what it actually does. But in my testing, I couldn't really figure out what the tax stock does. If anything, you're not going to be in a worse position if you equip it. Uh, it definitely doesn't make anything worse and it's probably supposed to make things better. So it's probably a better, better call to still throw it on your gun if you find it. So finally, just to kind of prove that all these things do have a impact, we are going to look at a comparison of a fully stocked M416 to handle recoil versus an a naked m416 and that is going to be a m416 with a compensator a vertical grip and a stock i believe those to be the best combination for reducing recoil again as i mentioned at the stock i'm not too sure if that makes a difference but go ahead and take a look and it is pretty considerable you can see that you do have a little bit more control of your gun it's not that crazy of a difference but it's definitely enough that in a firefight it might save your life uh so next up we're gonna go ahead and look at some of the more weapon specific attachments we already did the tax stock but there's also a stock for the micro Uzi. Now this also, like the tax stock, has the same description. It says it makes recoil recovery faster and reduces weapon sway. Again, hard to tell with a micro Uzi that can't take sights if weapon sway was affected and it does not seem like it is. However, it does appear to actually make the gun fire uh, with less recoil and make it more controllable. As you can see from these comparisons, the spread uh, seems to be smaller and it definitely seems like it's easier to control and rapid fire. So the, the micro Uzi stock definitely does have a positive effect, though it seems to be different than what it's described as doing. Uh, next up, we have the bullet loops. They exist for both the shotgun and the car. We'll show the shotgun here first. And as you can see, it makes reloading faster. It's effectively the shotgun version of quick draw mags, and it's a straight upgrade. No reason not to take it. So throw it on there and make your reloads a bit quicker. And for the car, it's also, again, just kind of like quick draw for the car. Uh, it is a unique weapon for the car only, and it makes both your tactical and your full reload considerably quicker. It also kind of bugs out the animations a little bit, so it looks like there's a little bit of a visual bug there as well. No reason not to take it, throw it on that car. And so let's look at the choke for the shotgun now. Now, this is one people have been asking for what it really does. Does it increase my effective range or does it decrease spread? It kind of does a little bit of both. Basically, if you look at the comparison, it does make your spread considerably smaller. Now, that's not affected by your crosshair. It's not actually reflected in that. But if you actually look at where the bullets land, it's a much tighter spread. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's much damage fall off in this game. If any, I need to do full testing on that before I can say for sure. But because of that tight tighter spread, you can really nail somebody from a greater distance. And this has the same effect on uh, the over under as it, as it does on the pump. So the cheek pad attachment claims to reduce recoil, kick and sway. In my testing, uh, it did seem to reduce sway. Uh, it definitely seems like it steadies your aim a little better. It's not huge, but it's enough that it might make getting those shots bigger. And I imagine with a 15 times scope, that is going to be a much more visible and considerable difference. The reducing kick claim, I could not find any evidence to back up. It seems like after a shot, the kick is the same, independent of having a cheek pad or not. So I don't, again, don't know if that's a bug or if I'm missing something again, if you know why I'm not seeing what I'm seeing, uh, go ahead and leave a comment to this video. And finally, for the last weapon specific, 
uh, attachment, we have the quiver. Again, this is really just like quick draw mags for the crossbow. It makes reloading faster. It actually makes the crossbow reload at a much more reasonable pace. There's no downside to it. Throw it on that crossbow and try and get some headshots. And so finally, to wrap everything up, we're going to take a look at sights. Uh, I took I, I went to a standard place uh, in Georgia Pole and looked down the bridge with each of the different sites available in the game to give you a picture of how they differ. Uh, first off, you got iron sights. Again, obviously, there's no zoom there. Uh, if, however, you steady your aim, you hold your breath, you're, you will hold the weapon steadier, and you will actually gain a slight zoom. It seems to be about equivalent to a two-time scope, maybe a little bit less. Uh, hollow sights, if we look at that, again, more or less the same. There's really no zoom uh, applied to it, but if you steady, you will steady the weapon while you hold your breath, and you'll also get an additional little zoom going on. Red dots, almost exactly the same as the hollow sight. Steadying will steady the weapon and give you that little bit of zoom, not quite two times. And then we get into the magnification sight. So the two times, obviously, magnifies it by two times. When you steady it, you don't get that additional zoom, and uh, but it does steady the weapon. The four times is obviously a four times magnification lens. It is a classic ACOG uh, lens as seen in many, many games. Uh, steadying your aim does not zoom the weapon either. Now, all of these sights can be applied to any, that I've mentioned so far, can be applied to any weapon that can take sights. The 18, the eight times and the 15 times, however, can only be applied to ARs and sniper rifles. They cannot be placed onto SMGs. Uh, so the eight times is a considerable zoom. This is where you're, you can actually really take long range engagements. Uh, steadying it does not obviously give you an additional zoom, but it does steady the weapon considerably. Now the 15 times is a beast. It can only be found in airdrops. Uh, it is a massively zoomed uh, uh, site. In fact, it's so zoomed that in this video, you're going to notice that the the houses that I'm looking at are unrendered. They're, they're not their highest LOD levels. They look old school, like a Nintendo 64. Uh, steadying this scope does not increase any zoom obviously because there's really not much more to increase but it does obviously give you a much steadier aim and can allow you to take those shots uh, so that's all the sights we're gonna i'm gonna throw those up into a comparison of all of them side by side so you can get a kind of a feel for how much each one kind of narrows your fov uh, 15 times isn't always going to be the most appropriate one to take depending on the engagements you think you're going to be taking You know if you're going to be doing close quarters of 15 times might not be the best site for you I find my favorite sites to be the two times and the eight times uh, anything else kind of I don't see much use for but obviously that's all personal preference So guys if you like this video uh, leave a comment below Let me know if there's anything I missed anything else you'd like to see I can always do an addendum to this uh, Subscribe if you want to see more OCD comment. We also have some more missed tested coming out soon I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video keep crunching those numbers. I'm Magnum Dopus.